Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Elisa Caffarada joins us. She's the director of the Nevada Department of Employment, Training, and Rehabilitation. Here for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Ring in the holidays with $350,000 big holiday extravaganza at Carson Valley Inn. Over 1,000 winners. Weekly cash, free play, and up to 10K in cash every Saturday. And two grand prize drawings. Win up to 20000 in cash. Tis the season for winning big at the Carson Valley Inn. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you. But we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Oh, what fun it is to win during the $100,000 Christmas giveaways at Timur at Casino. Up to $17,000 in cash and free play giveaways each week. And over $20,000 in giveaways on New Year's Eve, including up to ten dollars in cash. Your good times are at Timur at Casino. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are delighted to welcome back to the program Elisa Caffarada. She is the director of the Nevada Department of Employment, Training, and Rehabilitation, better known as DEETER. Welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. Um, so let's start out with, you know, probably this most serious part here. Um, the potential for recession obviously is out there, mm -hmm. and, and the Fed's goal is to increase unemployment as part of this. Mm -hmm. um, is DITA ready? Um, so, uh, first of all, we have a chief economist who is a pretty optimistic guy, and uh, he thinks we will come in for a soft landing. I don't think anyone expected Nevada or the country to recover jobs as fast as it did after the pandemic. So that's really positive news for Nevada. We've got a very strong economy. Um, and uh, we had just this last month a little bit of an uptick in unemployment claims. So uh, one of the things that's um, sort of out there is how quickly will the feds respond to that sort of slight increase in unemployment and sort of uh, ease up on their increases in interest rates. So is DITA ready? Um, we're as ready as we possibly can be under the regulations and the guidance that we have from the Department of Labor. So right now we are still trying to get caught up on regular unemployment adjudication and the reason for that is we lost about 500 staff at the end of last year due to the loss of some flexibility from the Department of Labor. So um, we're trying to get caught up uh, and current, uh, but uh, we also have been, since about the middle of the pandemic, implementing improvements to our systems to make it easier for claimants to get through. Uh, so we're doing everything we possibly can within the regulations that we have to live with. Okay, but you lost 500 employees. Uh, we, had, we were able to use contract staff, which is great because there are firms nationally that can bring in folks who have worked in unemployment systems in other states so they can get up to speed very quickly. Uh, and then we had uh, 200 folks on loan from welfare that had to go back and work on their uh, backlog uh, and we had a lot of we had about a hundred folks on loan from ourselves from the workforce development side and they're uh, back to that that work so yes about 500 people that's a huge amount yes uh, <laughs> um, where are you in terms of the backlog uh, you know uh, is it months is it 
Multiple months? So um, most people who apply for unemployment now get their benefits within two weeks of applying. Uh, over 60, 70 percent are in that boat. So the only backlog we have right now is if you have to go to adjudication for a regular unemployment claim. And uh, at the beginning of the year, we were about eight months behind. Now we're about six. So we've been catching up ground. Uh, we're hoping, you know, to catch up to be current very soon. But again, uh, in terms of flexibility, it's very tough. And and we're like all state agencies. It's hard for us to hire folks at this point because. Um, partly because of the pay, where state employment is not as competitive as uh, federal and local employment, uh, and also just because unemployment is very low and there's about two jobs for every potential employee, so uh, people who are looking for careers and jobs have a lot of options to choose from. Okay, so is there at this point not a lot of people that are not back in the workforce, in your opinion? Um, there's there's two parts of that equation. You know, there's unemployment is extremely low in Nevada. It's about four percent, which back in the day used to be considered full employment. Um, so not a lot of people looking for jobs. There there is a number of people. Our labor force participation is the number we're, you're talking about writ right. large, which is how many people um, are sort of 16 to. 65 who are working. It used to be very high in Nevada. It used to be about 70% of that age group was working. Now it's about 60% nationally and in the state that number has come down. Um, and in part, uh, I think there's three main groups in that uh, sort of loss of people participating work. One is baby boomers who are like, I think I'm retired now. <laughs> <laughs> right. COVID was was their cue. Um, I keep telling employers, you can get them back, but you're not going to get them back to a nine to five job. You could get them back part time, special projects, interesting work. They're great employees, but you got to shift the way you do the work. Um, people with caregiving, child care, family care. There's a huge chunk of folks in that category that aren't in the workforce. Um, and there are a lot of programs designed to help them right now, so I think that that group will start to slowly see come back in. And then you've got your 18 to 25 year old sort of disaffected folks who uh, just aren't seeing the return on investment for working or working full-time jobs. Okay, so, so how are they surviving, that third group? Um, some Is it credit cards? Well, one, savings are up with all the stimulus money that came in, so there is a lot more money in people's hands, which is why we have an inflation problem. Um, living with friends, living at home, uh, doing part-time or gig work to kind of get by. So there's a lot of options for them, um, but they're not really that interested in, again, sort of a nine to five job um, that baby boomers find very puzzling. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, but you know, I mean, that's not really that different than it was decades ago, uh, where young people, you know, are not necessarily going to be working 40, 60 hours a week because they don't have the goals and ambitions that one does once one starts aging a little and realizing <laughs> that one needs a career, perhaps, and um, a house and a family and raising that family. So if you can bunk on somebody's couch, why not? Right. Well, and I keep I saying... I mean, we were three to a house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, me too. And uh, I keep saying to my uh, friends who are more close to my age, you know, the other thing is when I was young, you could have a part-time job and get an apartment with your friends and probably go to school. Uh, and you could afford it. Well, you could have a full-time job today as a you know 18, 20 year old something, and you're not getting a house with your friends. I mean, it's really tough in Nevada. So, um, so the economics have changed as well uh, for young people. And so, you know, I I I think that if if employers are looking for employees, they need to not only look at wages, which have been going up, but also sort of the conditions of the job. Because young people really want flexibility, work from home, 
hybrid. Um, we're finding that to the extent we can offer those things at the state, it makes a little bit of a difference, even though we can't change the pay. Uh, that's up to the legislature. So. Okay, but I mean, you know, at a certain point, whatever savings that people have accumulated, they're going to run out of. Right. The next phase, one would presume, is credit cards, and that's you know, a death spiral, as we all know. Mm -hmm. um, and so do you, do you see people having to come back into the workforce just because there is that need? I think, um, yeah, I mean, one, I think for people, they're, they're interested in doing something meaningful. I, I think young people especially, you know, want a little more say over the conditions of work. So I, I do think that is a shift we are going to see in work. Um, because all ages really want that, uh, and the economy is on their side. Um, but for Nevada, uh, looking at, to the future, if we are going to have the kind of economic growth in the coming decades that we've had in the past, we need to figure out how to get people uh, back to work, but we need them to uh, take advantage of all the training and uh, credentials, uh, really upping their skills because the other thing that's changed in our economy is the jobs really are more skilled jobs. We used to have just really plentiful jobs that high school students could get and make a decent wage, especially in gaming and hospitality, and those are the jobs that are not coming back. Uh, so Yeah, I was going to ask you about up. that, you know, <laughs> because, you know, robotics, for example, mm -hmm. um, are huge and, and, and moving more rapidly than I think that uh, even the companies that were looking at them, they were thinking maybe a 10-year uh, look out there, and now it's, you know, yesterday and today. Right. Uh, you go into a restaurant and suddenly there's a robot server helping the regular server to bring, you know, the food for the 10 people. Right. So, but... but there's another side to this, which is, you know, as an employer, mm -hmm. you know, and, and at a certain point, the economy is going to change to where employers will be, you know, uh, uh, higher on the hierarchical scale than they <laughs> are right now. Um, mm -hmm. Where they're, where they're going to say, hey, I'm the one paying the money. I get to demand the rules. And, you know, I, I don't think everybody is producing as productively at home where the refrigerator's there and the TV's there and the mm -hmm. laundry's there and you can do a whole lot of other things. I'd like you to be in the office eight hours a day so I can, you know, not only see what you're doing, but there's that social aspect to it. You know, so many mm -hmm. people build their relationships that in some cases turn into marital relationships at the office. Do, where do you see that mix from your position? I, definitely a lot of employers are asking their their workers to come back into the offices. Uh, I, I hear about it at the state, I hear about it in the private sector. Um, and uh, that would, you'd have a lot more leverage if it weren't quite uh, such a hot labor market right now. Right. Literally two jobs for every employee out there. So um, don't have a lot of leverage and uh, I, I don't, I don't know that the evidence is on the side of the employers in that sort of thinking. Um, and I, I do think uh, that, like I said, I think employers need to think about continuing to take steps to work with employees to, to give them more control over certain things. And, um, you know, we have a work from home policy. You have to be meeting your work performance standards to be able to work from home. And, we can tell. Uh, we can. We don't monitor our employees like through their computers. But if you do ten cases a week, you got to be doing ten, ten cases a week to have the flexibility. So, I think there's a way to have sort of have sort of both. But uh, I, you know, we're not going back to the pre-COVID world. So everybody's got to figure out how to go forward. Well, and, and and in some ways that's true. But I mean, for example, construction, nursing, uh, mm -hmm. doctors. Uh, they ain't working from home, or I'm a little concerned if they are. Doctors and nurses are definitely working from home or really? from their office and tele doing telehealth. Okay, sure. telehealth, sure. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean that's not exactly the same. But 
I you well, I mean again we have to we have to be inventive and figure out how to do it. Like robotics and uh, that that's gonna be a key part of our future. So, you know, you haven't asked me, but one of the things that's keeping me up at night is That's my favorite question. <laughs> <laughs> is you know, Congress passed the bipartisan infrastructure legislation and also the Inflation Reduction Act. That's billions of dollars of investment coming to Nevada and other states. We have really, I, I'm not concerned with whether, you know, folks are gonna be willing to come back into the office or not. I'm concerned with where do we get all the people because it's projected there'll be 140,000 new jobs in Nevada. We don't have 140,000 people looking for work. So, and, the, and they're skilled jobs. This is plumbing and electricians and clean energy and battery technology. We gotta figure out, that's what's keeping my, me up at night, is how do we get folks to get into the training, get into apprenticeship programs, to get the skills to uh, do these jobs because that infrastructure money won't come to Nevada if we don't have the workforce to do the projects. Okay, so a lot of the different builders associations across the state have been promoting the fact um, that construction is not just hammer and nails, but it's a high-tech world. Yes. Um, and so they've been doing that for the last few years. Um, I, I know this is a, a touchy subject, but you know, isn't this where we look at immigration as a potential resource? Um, we've got uh, tons of people who want to come here and work, um, but we don't have a way to get them here. Mm -hmm. um, or is it such a political, you know, fire um, that we don't dare touch it? Yeah, I keep saying, let me know when you want me to start talking about historically the way we've solved this problem is through immigration. Uh, there, there are vehicles to bring in foreign labor uh, in state and federal law. But yeah, I mean, federally, I think that Congress has got to tackle this. Because if you're going to build the infrastructure that the infrastructure bills are paying for, like I said, every state has money, uh, you're going to need more labor because most states are in the same boat that we are. Okay, but there is actually stuff that you can do right now um, if the state is willing without federal oversight on it? Without changing, you know, without comprehensive immigration reform, yeah, there are some foreign worker um, uh, programs uh, at, the, at the federal level that you can tap into, but the criteria are kind of tough to meet, like you have to have a job you haven't been able to fill for a year, things like that. Um, so it's not, it's not gonna bring in 140,000 workers so we we need to be doing something federally as well all right let's take a break we'll come back okay. more because we've got so many now <laughs> topics that we've now put on the table <laughs> with elisa caferata director of Dieter. we'll be right back oh what fun it is to win during the one hundred thousand dollar christmas giveaways at timmer at casino up to seventeen thousand dollars in cash and free play giveaways each week and over twenty thousand in giveaways on new year's eve including up to 10k in cash your good times are at timmer at casino with Nevada's only transplant center and verified burn center, the science is here. With award-winning cardiologist and the state's only dedicated heart failure clinic, the talent is here. With Nevada's most advanced robotic surgery, the technology is here. And with the Silver State's only designated pediatric trauma center, hope is here. All because we are here. UMC. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Event Center sits at the heart of the Las Vegas Strip. Two floors of meeting and event space are ideal for groups and conventions. Stay in one of 200 luxurious rooms and suites. Brand your event throughout the property. Flexible event spaces make for easy planning and personalization. Take over the entire hotel with a full buyout option. Southwest Specialties has been making the homes and businesses of Nevada beautiful for more than 20 years. Their experienced designers and craftsmen create the walkways, backyards, water features, and a variety of outdoor cooking areas that add curb appeal and value to your investment. Call today or visit them at their website and see how they can make your outdoor spaces special. Southwest Specialties, creative, distinctive, 
beautiful. Ring in the holidays with $350,000 big holiday extravaganza at Carson Valley Inn. Over 1,000 winners. Weekly cash, free play, and up to 10K in cash every Saturday. And two grand prize drawings. Win up to 20000 in cash. Tis the season for winning big at the Carson Valley Inn. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Elisa Caffarada. She's the director of the Nevada Department of Employment Training and Rehabilitation. So over 100,000 people needed, money available, wonderful, except one minor problem. Where the heck are they going to live? Right. Well, that's a, a huge challenge in both the North and the South. Uh, I, I know every major company is looking at it and thinking about it. I mean, the great thing is that uh, there's been over $500 million from the ARPA money dedicated to affordable housing. So uh, I was talking to the folks with the Reno Housing Authority just uh, this weekend, and they have several projects underway that will be starting. Um, there's some rehabilitation, so that should be fast, and uh, some new construction, so that'll take a little longer. But um, I think that is, uh, uh, at least there's a big investment in the state to address that. Yeah, the, the, the problem is, you know, Edon said a few years ago for Northern Nevada, we needed 5,000 homes uh, a year but yet we're building 1,500, 2,000 homes. So we're, we're continually falling behind. Mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing a major builder coming into the Fallon area to build housing at the, the base there. Um, but it just seems at both ends of the state, uh, we're having serious problems trying to get builders to build the housing that's really needed at this point. Right, uh, I think there's a whole handful of solutions. You're making me put on my run for city council hat. Uh, you know, land use planning, um, you know, uh, auxiliary dwelling unit permits. Um, there, there's just a whole, a whole host of things that need to happen locally uh, at the state level uh, to help uh, sort of make it easier to get to the 5,000 units uh, a year that are needed because it's a struggle to put up multi-family housing in any neighborhood, for example, but it, it's desperately needed. Oh, to say the least. Okay, let's take another break and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Renee Summer, our digital news anchor here at 7 at 7. Watch our streaming nonstop newscast immediately with your mobile phone. 7 at 7 is the new way for you to get every bit of local news you need in just seven minutes. Breaking news, local neighborhood news, weather and sports are just a click away. Reporters bring you all of what's happening in the Valley from Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, YouTube and more. Get every bit of local news you need from the RJ and LVRJ.com. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, Go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Truck drivers are some of the hardest working people you'll meet, delivering over 70% of America's freight and 92% of Nevada's. When there's a natural disaster, they're delivering critical supplies to help those communities recover and rebuild. Every sector of the economy and our nation's military rely on truck drivers. So let's take a moment to say thank you. On the open road or city streets, our truck drivers are rolling to make our economy and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Each day, the Children's Advocacy Alliance partners with leaders, legislators, and families across Nevada to improve children's health, education, economic well-being, and safety. We recognize Nevada will be no better than the state of its children. Be a part of this change. Be a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Alliance. For more information, go to caanv.org. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Elisa Caffarada. She's the director of the Nevada Department of Employment, Training, and Rehabilitation. Um, as we head into the new year, are you optimistic about employment levels as we see the state's main industry, gaming, continuing 
with this string of billion dollar months, which is now a year and a half in, which is incredible. Yeah, it's been pretty amazing. Um, but the hospitality and gaming is the one industry, along with government, that has not recovered its pre-pandemic level of employment. Um, and I really while don't. While still making a ton of money. While still making a ton of money. So I really don't, but they've changed their business model. They um, have kiosks to check in and check out. They don't do um, housekeeping service unless you ask. So I don't, I think those jobs aren't coming back or will be absorbed by expansions, but I don't see those industries going back to the same kind of uh, business model. What's great for Nevada is the, the fields that have higher employment than before the pandemic are uh, high skilled industries like manufacturing and IT. So that's great for the economy because those are super robust uh, jobs and our economic engine of gaming is still robust as well. And uh, my pitch to Nevadans is it's a great time to invest in developing your skills because the jobs are gonna continue to have more skill requirements. So uh, I would like to plug employmv.gov, which is sort of our central hub for folks to get training resources, referrals to apprenticeship programs, because uh, we need to sort of up the skills of Nevadans because the jobs are getting uh, more complicated and are gonna call for that. And the money is there. And the, the money is there. We support training. Apprenticeships pay you to train. Uh, and but those yeah, but when you ha once you have the job, the, you're the making coin. The jobs are paying great, great wages. So it's really exciting times for Nevada if we can just get folks to, you know, invest in themselves. And stop watching daytime TV. <laughs> okay, that's where we got to <laughs> leave. Thank you so much, as always, Elisa, for being here. And we'll be right back. I'm here at the Carson Valley Inn in Minden with Joey Whitaker. Entertainment here at the Carson Valley Inn is extraordinary. Yeah, super proud of the TJ's Corral our outdoor venue, about 1,500 seats. We've had first-class entertainment out there. We've had Merle Haggard, we've had Chris Young, we've had Lee Bryce a couple times, we've had Pat Benatar, Joan Jett, who's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, we're real proud out there, and it's, and it's just a great time. Watch CarsonValleyInn.com and grab those tickets early. It's not a long way to get away to the Carson Valley Inn. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. As always, you can watch Nevada Newsmakers 24 hours a day at NevadaNewsmakers.com. We'll see you on the next show.